What's going on guys, Walrus here. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for subscribing, and welcome back. Now today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I don't normally do this, I don't normally get personal with you guys here on my channel for the most part. I stick to tips and tricks, gameplay, re gameplay related information, you know, things of that nature. Today what we're gonna be talking about is getting a job, your first job. And uh, I'm gonna share some personal experience with you. I have no idea how this is gonna go over if you guys are gonna like this little detour into real life tips and tricks. So let me know in the comment section and let me know by leaving a like rating if you want more videos just like this one. As far as what you guys are watching in the background, it's 6v6 Studio Domination. I'm playing with a friend of mine, Ice Rink 5 am I'll link him in the description of this video. And uh, I've previously done two tips and tricks videos, one that focuses on this custom class setup on why it's so effective as well as some C4 tossing spots and another that focus on, focuses on some sentry gun placement tips as well as some flag capping spots that are often overlooked here on Studio for Domination. Those videos are on the screen right now. You can check them out a little bit later if you're so inclined. Cool, so getting a job. Now this video is going to be more of an introduction to this series that I'd like to do. I'd like to do more of if you guys want to see it. And this this subject, this topic, there are a lot of variables involved, such as where do you live? What's your life like at home? Do you have access to transportation to get you to and from work? Do you have access to some business professional or business casual clothes so that you can look sharp on an interview? It's my goal to use my experiences and help you guys get over and through some of those obstacles that you're going to account encounter initially when you go to look for your first job. And I gotta say, you guys, it's one of the most rewarding experiences when you complete an interview and you feel good about it. You go home, you wait a day, you get a phone call from human resources or the supervisor or manager from where you applied to, and they've got good news. You're hired and you're gonna start on this date. You go to work for a week or two, and then you get your first paycheck. It's, it is a very rewarding experience. However, with that being said, I'm sure there's quite a few of you that are thinking, wait a second, I don't need a job. I mean, mom and dad pay for stuff. They're gonna send me to college, and once I get my degree, that's when I'll put my Mr. Serious pants on, or my Mrs. Serious skirt on, or your Mr. Serious skirt on, or whatever it is you want to wear when you go look for a job. All right, well, let me just let me just break this down for you. This might turn into a bit of a rant, so stay with me, and please keep in mind there are a lot of variables. So let's just say that's the case for simplicity's for simplicity's sake. You have great parents, and they're gonna give you what you need and some things that you want all through high school. They're gonna give you what you need and some things that you want all through college. They expect you to study hard and get your degree. And so that's what you do. You party hard, you study hard, you, com you complete college, you've got your degree, congratulations. Now you're out on a job hunt. You're trying to find your first job so that you can advance in the workforce and you can build your resume. So you're in the waiting room with five or six other candidates that are competing for the same job as you are. Now, do you think you're really gonna stand out because you have a degree? Most of the time, your degree isn't even going to be relative to the position that you're trying to apply for. And nine times out of ten, there's going to be somebody that's more qualified, got more experience, and that sounds better in an interview than you are. So just consider this for a second. So you got candidate A, which is you. You got your degree, but you have no work experience. There's no way for the human resources manager or supervisor to gauge your performance in this position and whether or not you're going to be competent enough to do the job. And now there's candidate B. Candidate B wasn't really cut out for college. They didn't go to college. Instead, right out of high school, they started working. And they've got four years of work experience working for different companies, working with people from different cultures, ethnicities, different backgrounds, getting along with them, problem solving with them. They understand what it's like to be under pressure and meet a deadline, make a goal, things like that. And then there's candidate C. Candidate C is the complete package, hence the candidate C. They've got the degree. They've got the work experience because in high school and all through college, they decided they would have a part-time job. So they're the full package. They're the one that's probably going to get the job nine times out of 10. All right. So now that I've laid all that out there for you guys, now hopefully I've encouraged you to get your mind right and to start thinking, okay, I should get a job because you should. If you're 15, 16 years old and you can get a work permit or you have a car or you have a means of transportation getting to and from work on time, you should be getting a part-time job. It is a great great thing to do and one of the best experiences you'll ever have in your life and you'll learn some you'll learn some very valuable lessons from this experience. So I got my first job when I was 16 years old. As soon as I had my license and access to a family car, I was out on a job hunt. First place that I worked was McDonald's and I'm not ashamed of it. Like I said, it was a great learning experience. The reason I got the job was because I had two friends from high school that worked there as well that were able to put in a good word for me. At this point in time, I'm currently 31 years old and for the last 11 years of my life, I've been running my own successful business. Additionally, I was in the right place at the right time. 
and myself, Big Snacks, Chaos Silencer, Wack4863, and Nando from Part Time Gamers. These guys are all YouTubers and friends of mine. We did something that was thought to be impossible. We started the Yoush Network. And in a future video, I'll tell you guys a little bit more about my role in both of these companies and what I do. Objectively speaking, it's my goal to go over this process with you chronologically, starting from the beginning of the process and ultimately concluding with how to leverage the experience, knowledge, and the skills that you've learned at your first job into a new opportunity that pays more, has better hours, and essentially is a step up from your first job. Keep in mind, there are a number of different factors involved in this process. I personally have over 15 years of experience in this crucial fundamental of one's lifestyle, and whether or not I continue with the series, is entirely up to you guys. Now the first thing that we're going to discuss is attitude and expectation. With this being your first job and you basically having zero experience, do not expect to get a job that's going to pay more than minimum wage. You need to make up your mind that you're going to take what you can get and commit at least six months to a year working there. With it currently being summertime, your availability should be fairly open and a lot of companies do what's called seasonal hiring, meaning they're looking to take on more staff specifically for that time period such as summer or winter break, Christmas time as well. In some cases, those seasonal positions can be turned from a temporary position into a permanent part-time or full-time job depending on your performance and reliability. So getting back to attitude, expectations, and availability. Be prepared to work at least four to five days out of the week for a minimum of four to eight hours a day. And if you have a good attitude about having an open availability, in other words, you're okay with having the company that you're trying to get a job with tell you your hours and let you know when, when they need you to come in, as opposed to you having an attitude that's basically like, look, I'm not working Saturday, I'm not working Sunday, I'm only, I can only come in Tuesdays and Thursdays and I can only work from one o'clock to four o'clock you're probably not gonna get a job anywhere with that kind of attitude and with that kind of availability. And with that being said, you guys, I'm pretty much out of time, so that is going to conclude this introductory episode. If you guys want me to continue with it in addition to the videos I already do, then let me know by leaving a comment and a like rating on this video. More content is definitely on the way for me. I cannot thank you guys enough for your support. I'm really looking forward to continuing this series if it's something that you guys wanna see and hear more of. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this gameplay. I had a lot of fun, the dolly cam is something that I really enjoy using. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on, on that if you guys would like. Um, but that's pretty much it. You guys, make sure you stop by Ice Rink 5 AM's channel. Check them out. Tell them that Walrus sent you. You guys are amazing. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.